Hey you guys, it is Maddie here, back with another video. In my last video, I asked you guys to send me questions or ideas, and a total of zero people gave me a question, so thanks for nothing. <laughs> I'm just being serious. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about how to fight fair in a relationship. Whether you're dating, you're married, thinking about dating, even in friendship. But in this particular video, I want to talk about relationships in the context of dating, marriage, any kind of romantic relationship, and some keys to help you fight fair, fight well, if that's even like a phrase, I don't know. Clint and I have been married a little bit over a year. I know that that may not be a super long time, there's people that have been married way longer than we have that have a ton of wisdom, but I feel like this is something that we do really well. And we both had this really high standard for our relationship, so we both really take conflict seriously because you need to have healthy conflict to have a healthy marriage. And people that aren't having any conflict, I would question whether or not their marriage is really healthy if you say, oh no, we never fight, we don't fight about anything. Even if you're dating, there's going to be things that come up. When you have an opinion that is different from your boyfriend's opinion, you're going to have a conflict and you're going to need to resolve it in a good and healthy way. One thing that I think is really critical to understand pre-conflict is that there's always intimacy on the other side of a conflict. Anytime Clint and I have had an argument or disagreement or misunderstanding, maybe one of us just assumed that the other one was mad and so now we're feeling weird and we don't talk about it for an hour. Usually on the other side of that, when we come to each other and say, hey, I'm feeling like this is going on or hey, are you okay? and we talk about it, there's always intimacy on the other side of that, and I always end up feeling closer to him after the argument, which I know sounds counterintuitive. I think the reality is we're talking, I'm talking about how I feel, you're talking about how you feel, we're working it out, and then on the opposite side of that, wow, I feel really connected to you. So I think that knowing that can disarm people to be able to have a conflict, because if you're going into your conflict thinking, gosh, they're gonna be mad, this is gonna make things worse, we're gonna have more disconnection, then why would you wanna have an argument? Just sweep everything under the rug. That's what I used to do. I'd be like, well, let's just not talk about it. And then three weeks later I'll scream or something. Obviously that doesn't work. So I'm going to break down a few things about ways that we fight unfairly and then I'm going to give you some tips for fighting fair in your relationship. So one thing that I think is unfair that is not allowed, name calling. Name calling is just not cool. You don't want to be called something in the middle of a fight when you're talking, you're trying to vent how you feel and someone's like, oh, you're the worst. Oh, you're an idiot. Oh, you're crazy. Guys, just try to tell your lady in the middle of an argument that she is crazy and you will actually see her get a little crazy. Ain't nobody gonna call me crazy in the middle of a fight and not see me throw something. Name calling brings someone from a place of I'm just having a conversation to now I feel like I need to defend myself because you're calling me things that I actually am not or I'm not trying to be. So name calling. No, don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Another big thing that I think creates more problems in an argument is bringing up things from the past that you said you forgave them for. Now here's the reason that this is bad. If you come to someone wanting to resolve a conflict, but you're bringing the baggage of all the things they've done wrong in the past to fuel the rest of your anger, that conflict is no longer about just that one argument. That conflict is about this, and then six months ago you did this, which, and then three months ago you did it again, and so now I'm mad because I never brought it up six months ago, and now we're confronting you about it. If your partner comes to you and is trying to tell you, hey, this hurt my feelings, hey, I felt like you did this, and I'm unhappy about it, but you get defensive and you bring something up from the past that they've done that you said was okay, we're past it, we're moving on, that's unfair. First of all, getting defensive isn't going to help you in an argument. It's just going to create a deeper hole that you don't have to dig yourself out of. Trust me, I've learned this one the hard way, you guys. Classic. I think using dramatic words like always or never are kind of unfair. To say that someone always does something or never does something, I highly doubt that that's true. Even if it is true, it's not going to be helpful for that person to hear, you're always lazy. You never take out the trash. 
It's just not gonna help. You're just gonna make it worse, to be honest. You can say, hey, I've noticed that this has happened a few times. You'd be surprised how much farther you can go with this has happened a few times versus you always do this. Because when you say you always do this or you never do this, it's kind of like pointing your finger at them and being like, you're bad, you always mess up, you're never great. And if someone said that to me, I would be like, Ugh. Okay, like why even try? Like I, I guess I always do this or I guess I've never, you know, it's just not a good thing. It doesn't make anyone feel safe to have that conversation with you because it feels like you've already labeled them as what they're gonna do or not gonna do. You kind of already told them that this is what you expect. There's no really room for change. And I think that is why that's unfair. Another unfair way to fight is projecting your own problems onto them. One of my absolute least favorite things that I hear from people about arguments is that they say, I was really mad about this, but I just took it out on my girlfriend or I just took it out on this person or whatever. Now it's great that you feel that safe, that you can be that mean or you can dump emotionally onto someone, but it's really damaging for your relationship. If you need a place to vent, that's okay. But if you're gonna take anger out on someone and make them the problem when they're really not the problem, I think that does a lot more damage to your relationship than good. Sometimes the damage that you've already done is gonna take a long time to heal from. The words that you say are so important. You might say things that you end up regretting and it's gonna take your significant other a long time to heal from that. And so it's better to self-investigate and see kind of what's going on inside of you first before you bring them the problem. Okay, so that brings us to how to fight fairly. This is one of my favorites and I'm calling this owning your own crap. I've been going to counseling for a little over a year now just by myself and it has been amazing. I honestly think everyone should go to counseling. I think it's so good for you emotionally, spiritually, just to know what's a trigger for you, how you react to things. Everyone has their own crap. And if you're looking at me and you're thinking, oh my gosh, I can't believe she goes to counseling. She must be really messed up. You really messed up, girl. So don't you be coming and telling me that I'm messed up. You probably need counseling too. So, <clears throat> sorry, that's me being defensive. And I'm gonna fight fair. So, that's my counseling spiel. I'll give you an example. This is a real argument that Clint and I had right when we were first married. Clint wanted to introduce me to some high level people up at this church that I really admire. And I was definitely not feeling like I wanted to do that. I just felt weird. I felt like, I don't want to do this. Why do you want to do this? From his perspective, he was like, hey, I have these connections with these people and I think that you would really connect with some of them. You should meet them. I was thinking, I really don't feel like these people would want to meet me. I feel weird. Why are we doing this? This is me being married to you. Is it always going to be forcing me to meet these people that I don't want to meet? Why am I acting like this? Okay, you see where I'm going. Trust me, I do realize how ridiculous that I sound right now. But in real time, I'm mad. <laughs> After we argued about it for a good 30 minutes, I went by myself and I just had some time and I came back and I was like, hey, I'm really sorry. I realized that I just kind of feel insecure and weird about meeting these people and you're being really great and wanting to introduce me to them. I'm really sorry that this is really just me. The problem right now is not you. The problem right now is me. And I think that that is one of the biggest, best statements that you can make. And it really honestly is a phrase of humility. You saying, hey, wow, I'm the problem. You're not the problem. I think that for us, has been one of the most successful things that we've done as a couple is recognizing in ourselves what's actually going on with us and are we the problem and so recognizing when the problem really is you is huge 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 Donald that was my Donald Trump impression <laughs> anyways Staying respectful and honoring always. This kind of goes along with the name calling, mocking, like, eh, and I think you said meh, what are you said meh? Oh my gosh, if you do that to me, it will drive me actually insane. Being honoring and respectful is huge and it'll help maintain connection during an argument where you'd say, hey, I can totally see how that would feel like that or just valuing their opinion, valuing where they're coming from, really trying to be in their shoes and say, I respect you and so I know that you have great input and that you have something to bring to the table and I should respect and honor your opinion because that's the only way that we're gonna really understand each other. If I don't respect and honor my husband's opinion, I'm constantly gonna think that I'm right and that he's wrong every single time. But because I respect and honor 
honor him, even if it sounds ridiculous to say, okay, I'm really gonna stop and think about what you said and take it seriously because it has weight for me, because I respect you. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. So check back next time, subscribe if you want to, and I'll be back here with more videos.